Hello everybody and welcome to our class video about indirect measurement. Our learning goal for this video is that you'll be able to apply properties of similar triangles to indirect measurement situations. So well, what exactly do I mean by indirect measurement anyway? Okay, well, to sum it up, it's basically measuring, measuring something but not in a direct fashion. Okay, well what do I mean by that? Okay, well, indirect measurement is the process of calculating distances or heights of some kind that are difficult to measure otherwise. Okay, you can't measure them directly very well. What do I mean by directly? Well, I mean like with a ruler. So, for example, say you wanted to find the height of a tree or a building or something like that. Are you going to take a ruler or a yardstick and go stand up next to the building and figure out how tall that is? Um, I'd like to see you try. So, that becomes a lot more difficult. There's some distances that it's just not practical to measure directly. So that's where indirect measurement comes in. The best way to see how some of these techniques work is to see some examples. So let's go for it. Okay, so here's the first example. One way you can find the height of things that are really tall, which would be difficult to measure normally, is by using shadows. So, let's say this situation. Hannah measures the shadow of a tree to be 16 feet long. Okay, so I'm going to start drawing a picture here. See, there's a tree, isn't that a pretty tree? And there's a shadow. Hey, don't judge me. I'm a math teacher, not an art teacher. Okay, so... She measures the shadow of the tree to be 16 feet long. So we got a tree and we got the shadow. Okay. She asks her friend Julio to measure her own shadow, which is 3 feet 2 inches long. Okay, so here's her and, and her shadow. Okay, got it. And she herself is 5 feet 10 inches tall. So let's put the measurements on there. 16 feet, 3 feet 2 inches, and 5 feet 10 inches. Okay, what are we trying to find? We're trying to find the height of the tree, so the height of the tree there is going to be x. Okay, so how does this work? Well, the reason it works is because you got the sun up there, and all of the sun's rays run parallel because the sun is so far away. So when the sun's rays are, go parallel, it creates congruent angles <clears throat> where the sun's rays hit the ground from the top of the person or the top of the tree. Okay, so we call that the angle of elevation. We'll talk about that more later on down the road in class. Okay, so basically we've got some similar triangles because we've got congruent angles here. And we also know that the, if the object is standing straight up, and so are you, that we have right angles at the base. So therefore, these triangles are similar by angle-angle similarity theorem. Okay, so since we have similar triangles, we could figure out the height of the tree, couldn't we? Alright, so let's set up a proportion. Now, as soon as I do that, I start running into problems. What do I do with this uh, 5 feet 10 inches here? I can't really plug that in directly to a proportion. A solution to this issue is to change all of it into one unit. I could change all of the dimensions into just feet or all into just inches. Let's do just inches. So there are 12 inches to a foot, so 5 feet is 60 inches. Then we have another 10 inches on top of that, so that would be 70 inches. Applying the same thing to 3 feet 2 inches, 3 feet would be 36 inches, add another 2, and this becomes 38 inches. I also have to convert the 16 feet into inches. Multiplying that by 12, I get 192 inches. Okay, now I can set up my proportion. So let me put 70 over 38, and then x over 192. Okay, so I could solve this proportion just like we're used to before. So cross multiplying, 
this would be 38x cross multiplying the other direction 70 times 192 is some really big number using the calculator here I'll get 13,440 if I divide both sides by 38 then I will get x equals 353.7 inches okay here, let me clear off some room for me here. Okay, so that's in inches. Chances are we want to know the height of the tree in feet. So if I, divi if I divide that by 12 to convert it back into feet, I would get a value of x to be 29.47 feet. There we go. That's the height of the tree. Okay, makes sense? Let's look at one more example. Okay, so... Another way to find the height of an object you wouldn't be able to measure is to use a mirror. So let's look at this example. In order to find the height of a flagpole, Dorian places a mirror on the ground between him and the flagpole. Okay, so here's a flagpole, there's a mirror, and there's our friend Dorian. Okay, he positions himself so that he can see the tip of the flagpole in the mirror. Okay. So, in other words, the light that comes from the flagpole, from the very tip, bounces off of the mirror directly into his eyes. Because of the way the mirror works, it creates congruent angles. For a mirror, the angle of incidence, where the light ray hits the mirror, is the same as the angle that it bounces off, of, bounces off at, which is the angle of reflection. Those are some physics terms. You'll learn that in physics. Okay, so we've got congruent triangles again by the angle-angle similarity theorem because we also have the right angles where the flag touches the ground and where Dorian is standing straight up. Okay, so let's put some measurements on this. He asks his friend Chris to help him take measurements and he measures the distance from Dorian's feet to the mirror to be 5 feet 2 inches, okay, from the mirror to the flagpole to be 30 feet 1 inch, and he also measures the height of Dorian's eyes above the ground, which is 6 feet 1 inch. Notice that it has to be his, uh, the height of his eyes, because it's where the light rays hit his eyes. That's the height that matters. Okay, so we want to know how tall the flagpole is. That's x. Since I've created similar triangles, I can solve this pretty much the same way we did before. All right, notice that I've got <clears throat> feet and inches again, which is how a lot of English measurements are taken, so I need to convert them all into one unit. Let's convert all of these into inches. Okay, so six feet one inch Okay, 6 feet is 72 inches, so add another inch, that would be 73 inches. <clears throat> okay, then 5 feet 2 inches, 5 feet is 60 inches, so this would be 62 inches. 30 feet 1 inch, okay, 30 feet times 12 would be 360, plus another 1 would be 361 inches. Okay, setting up my proportion. Okay, I, would, I could put 73 over 62. Then, on the other triangle, I would have x over 361. To solve it, I could cross-multiply. So I would get 62x equals, from 73 times 361, that is 26,353. <clears throat> All right. Divide both sides by 62, and I get x to be 425.05 inches. Well, that doesn't tell me a whole bunch. I'd rather know the height of the flagpole in feet, really. So, if I divide that by 12, that would give me a height of 35.42 feet. There we go. We've used similar triangles to find out the heights of two objects we normally couldn't measure. That's the whole idea of indirect measurement. There's, these are not the only kind of situations, but you can use the basic ideas we've captured here in order to solve them. Okay, so we'll practice this in class. I'll see you guys later.